Hey guys, Phil here at Woods Tree Farm. We are doing some actual tree farming work today. If you've been following our channel lately, it's been a lot of other property maintenance and firewood and that kind of stuff. But today we are out working on the trees and as we're walking around we're straightening up some trees which I know I've shared that in some other videos but between winds and animals and the soil settling and all that kind of stuff the trees some of the trees lean over after a little while so we come back and stand them back up and tamp them down and all that kind of stuff but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today today we are looking at our soil it's been over two years now since we had our soil tested last when we had our soil tested last we didn't have any trees in the ground yet we didn't do any soil prep there was no tilling there was no subsoiling and we've done now several plantings since that last soil test our oldest trees have been in the ground over two years and we now want to take a closer look at what our soil is doing. So our last soil test identified that our soil was really deficient in actually several things, but the most critical thing and the highest deficiency that we addressed was phosphorus. And we um, brought in a spreader truck and we bought, I forget what it was, 12 or 1300 pounds of fertilizer and spread it over just this section of the field behind me, which is only about an acre and a half from where I'm standing down to the pond. And the spreader truck came up here and supposedly fertilized this whole area evenly. But I noticed a few videos ago, I had the drone out here and there's a couple spots in this field that are considerably more green than the others. Right at the top of the field where the spruces are, you can kind of see where this fertilizer truck is, is turning around. And there are these two big crescent shaped spots that are green. So I think the spreader truck came up and did two big passes on our field and each place where he turned around the fertilizer was applied more heavily in those areas so what that means we probably have other areas that didn't get nearly as much as they were supposed to get so anyway we are now testing down in that area especially in the area where we had heavy losses among our canane firs and we're also testing our sunflower patch we're testing our newer planting of canane firs which is behind the camera and then we're going to test another area that we plan on planting next so follow along let's have a little fun and then we're going to get out the tractor and do some other work that i'll share with you later in the video now we're over where our newest planting is so we're going to take sample from both uh, rows from this year's canines and some of last year's that are just over there we're going to take about six samples zigzagging across this field here but i want you to see that the soil in this field over here is a nice kind of rich brown color and as we go over here we'll see how well this comes up there's like a stretch of red colored clay that kind of goes right through the middle of this field. So that soil's definitely going to test considerably different than the soil behind me. When we planted in the fall, we used the planter and it left these little hills on each side of the trees. So we want to try to knock those down. I have the scraper blade on the tractor here. That is an eight foot blade. I don't have a smaller one. But I think if we angle it over some more, we'll fit down our eight foot rows and maybe we can use the very edge of that blade to knock down those hills. So that's what we're gonna try later. So we don't have a soil coring tool, but we're just gonna take a little sample out of this hole. Stacy's going down about six or eight inches, removing all of the, any topsoil, which there really isn't. It's all mixed in because this was tilled previously. And then we'll use, um, you gonna use the other shovel or are you gonna use the shovel? Yeah, let me get the other one. We I have a smaller to... shovel and we'll just take a little sample kind of slicing down the edge of this hole and we'll put that in the bucket. And we've labeled it. So she just tried to get about half of that sample that she had on the shovel. And we'll go and do that six more times, kind of zigzagging uh, across this field. And then hopefully we'll have a nice representative sample in that bucket. While Stacy's doing that, I wanted to tell you some more about our soil sample that we got last time. Now we did work with the extension office then. They actually came out and did the sample at that time and sent it off for us. And when the results came back in, they helped us read those results and determine what the appropriate 
um, application of fertilizer would be for our soil. But I realized looking back on it now, when we got that report before, we were really clueless. And now, two and a half years later, we're only a little less clueless. But I, I realized that sample before, or that treatment that we did before, did not address a couple items that were identified on our previous soil sample. For one, that soil analysis that we got before identified that our soil was really low in calcium. And even though the pH levels were right about where we want them to be, the, um, the re there was a recommendation to not apply any lime because of the pH. But what we really need to do is apply calcium, which the most common uh, source of calcium is limestone. So we have to, you know, apply some calcium to get that back up. The other thing was that our report showed that our soil is really high in magnesium. So I have learned, and I don't know all of the ins and outs, but apparently you want calcium and magnesium to be more in a balance and not have one being really high and one being really low. And um, so we need to put some work into fixing that up as well. So before we do anything though, we are going to wait for these samples to come in. I have identified through our local co-op that we can get calcitic limestone. The normal limestone is usually pretty high in magnesium, but if you can get the calcitic stuff, it's not. So uh, we have a source for that if that becomes part of the treatment. I have also read that we could look into getting some sort of like liquid calcium. I'm not exactly sure how that works or where to get it or any of that kind of stuff. But once the once these analysis and these reports come in from this sample, we'll look into that some more and try to come up with a plan and I'll share that with you guys. So over here we can see now that we've got a big sample and some of this stuff, that is like a light colored clay. And then we also have some red colored clay. And everywhere that we dug was in an area that's been subsoiled and has been tilled. So you would think that this stuff would all be kind of mixed up a little bit better, but that's what we get. So we're going to combine this all together to get kind of an aggregate for this entire section. It needs to dry out some, it's quite wet. Um, but once it's dry, we can combine it and then we'll send off our sample and see what it says. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you got questions about our tree farm, leave those in comments. I appreciate you spending a little time with us today. And I'll post an update video in a couple weeks when we get the soil test results back. So thanks again. Until next time, hope you have a good one. See you on the next video.